Deep time really is a funny concept. The era in which we live, the one created by the Cape Pig mass extinction, has only existed for about 66 million years. To put that into perspective, the era before that, the age of reptiles, lasted for 186 million years. The one before that, the Paleozoic, also lasted for 186 million years. Obviously, start and stop points for these chunks of time are largely arbitrary. Scientists have used major earth-shattering events, such as extinctions, as benchmarks for these major chunks of time, and they just so happen to also usher in major shifts in life and death on Earth, as well as major shifts in the very makeup of the Earth. I bring up this heavy stuff because I want to show you the comparison in the lengths of some of the most well-known or talked about periods of time, such as the Carboniferous period. This chunk of time, often divided into the two Pennsylvanian and Mississippian periods, lasted 60 million years. That is around the same amount of time our world has existed for. That is also around the same amount of time as the worlds of the Devonian and Jurassic periods. In comparison, the Cretaceous period was the longest period of time, at least the longest period of time of life on Earth, at almost 80 million years. Despite all this, there is a ton of evidence of all sorts of things going on in the Cenozoic era and Cretaceous periods, yet comparatively little is known of the time the world was covered in forests, the time the world was ruled by bugs, the coal-building Carboniferous period. For all we know, entire clades of animals evolved and went extinct during this huge chunk of green time. The clades that didn't, oddly enough, were the big bugs that have traditionally characterized the Carboniferous. The millipedes, griffin flies, and scorpions all survived into the Permian before kicking the evolutionary bucket. Their growth was also not fueled by the large amounts of oxygen in Earth's atmosphere in the Carboniferous evidenced by their presence in the Permian, when the oxygen levels had lowered. But I'll have to save that story for another time as I'm getting carried away. Among the huge creepy crawlies that lived during the Carboniferous period, the most charismatic and well-known is probably also the largest to ever live, Arthropleura. Arthropleura was a giant form of millipede that thrived from the early Carboniferous to the early Permian with species that could reach up to 8 feet, 2.5 meters in length, and ranged from North America to Europe. All that time allowed for incredible speciation, with as many as 5 species currently known. Despite all those stats, it remains enigmatic because bugs suck at fossilizing, especially when they lived their entire lives on land. Especially, especially when they liked living in acidic, moist environments. As such, the majority of the Arthropleura fossil record consists of bits and pieces broken off of the main body. The best and most complete specimens all come from juveniles, not the behemoths that have been estimated from bits of armor and molts. Interestingly, their footprints are much better at preserving the fossil record, and these specimens preserve a much better record of the truly giant adult forms. Some fossil trackways have been found that are 20 inches, 50 centimeters wide. This brings me to a very special discovery of the best of the biggest Arthropleura fossils ever found. Paleontologists Neil Davies, Russell Garwood, Willie McMahon, George Schneider, and Anthony Shilito published a paper in the Journal of the Geological Society in 2021 on an Arthropleura fossil, specimen CAMSM X.50355, that was discovered in a fallen block of sandstone originating from a coastal cliff outcrop of the Stainmore Formation in Howick Bay, Northumberland, England, in 2018. This fossil consists of a slab and counter slab of the first 12 to 14 turgites, or dorsal segments of an arthropod. This specimen is the largest fossil of an arthropleura ever found, and the most complete at this size. It's also one of the best because it's preserved in three dimensions. Unfortunately, the remains themselves seem to have been entirely replaced or infilled by sediment after the animal's body had decayed away to carbon sludge. 
The only thing that actually sucks about this specimen that is actually rather common to most other Arthropleura fossils is that it's missing the head. Yeah, not much is known of the true appearance of the Arthropleura noggin, though plenty of inferences can be made from what little has been preserved across the known specimens and the many living distant millipede relatives. Let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to give a good visual on how big this chunk of bug really was, based on the proportions of more complete but much smaller specimens, plus some quick maths. The author team estimated that this Arthropleura, the Howick specimen, may have been as large as 55 centimeters, 22 inches wide, 1.9 meters, 6 feet, 3 inches to 2.63 meters, 8 feet, 8 inches long, and 50 kilograms, 110 pounds in weight. That larger length estimate makes this individual as large as an American alligator, the largest Arthropleura ever known, and one of, if not the largest arthropods to ever live. The only other thing that only matched it in size was the marine Eurypterid, J. Coleopterus, which has length estimates of 2.33 to 2.59 meters, 7 feet 8 inches to 8 feet 6 inches. Thanks, Mr. Man. Aside from size confirmation, this specimen unfortunately doesn't provide anything new. The sediments that encased its body were laid down by the low energy actions of a river system that was awfully close to the coast. Plant fossils prove that this river system was in a delta plain ruled by tree-forming plants like lycopsids, pteridosperms, and cordytalians. The Arthropleura was fumbling around in a region that was far more open than many other places. The coal deposits are pretty thin, so there were likely no huge, dense forests breaking down into coal. I mean, the dates of these rock layers also don't exactly match the characteristic Carboniferous forests anyway. At the time of this Arthropleura's death, its environment was populated by giant land-living amphibians and smaller creepy crawlies that lived in and on the soil. The traditional view of Arthropleura environs was swamps and dense forests, and a body in open coastal delta plains and river channels sort of adds to the idea that these animals were locomoting their way through all sorts of biomes, munching on a variety of possible plant material, whether that be decaying detritus or fresh leaves and seeds. One last interesting thing about this specimen is that it was from a time when the oxygen levels were not much different than they are today. This continues to push back against the old hypothesis that suggested it was a huge amount of oxygen in the atmosphere, expelled by the global forests that allowed land invertebrates to grow so large. This was due to the thought that oxygen levels constrain how large invertebrates can grow. The biggest of Arthropleuras came from a time well before the oxygen peak of the Carboniferous. This biggest of Arthropleuras came from a time well before the oxygen peak of the Carboniferous. Other large Arthropleura remains have been recovered during the oxygen peaks, during the rainforest collapse at the end of the Carboniferous, and before the oxygen peak of the Permian period. Clearly, oxygen is largely arbitrary to the production of big bugs. Instead, the reality was likely a complex combination of factors, such as climate, food availability and abundance, ecology, Cope's rule, and more. Who knows what else remains unknown about this giant chunk of Earth's geologic history. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.